Hello, hello, Andrea Maeski here with Dental Health Tutoring. Sorry, my dog was just barking. Oh, there's my dog again. There's um, construction workers outside right now, and she can't see them because I shut all of the blinds, but she can sense them. So I apologize if you guys can hear that, but I don't even know if you can. So I'm just going to continue on. Um, but yeah, you guys, so another episode of the day in the life of a dental hygienist, and this will be a good one. I'm going to talk to you guys about staying on time in the dental office, because even after working for 14 years, this is my biggest pet peeve is being behind. Only because if I'm behind, it means that I have to work harder. I feel bad that I'm behind. So like, I just feel bad for the patients. And then you might get those rude patients who are mad because you're five minutes behind, or especially if you're half an hour behind, they get really mad. And then you're thinking, okay, so here you're talking to me for 10 minutes about how mad you are that we're always behind. Yet now I'm even more behind, you know, but um, I did do a video about actually how to stay on time in the dental office. Um, it's been a while though since I've done that, but if you would like to see the first um, video that I had done, just do a search in my channel. Um, search something like how to stay on time or how to be on time and that video should pop up. But I wanted to do another one because I got an email the other day of um, from a new um, dental hygienist how to stay on time and how she's having a hard time staying on time and doing everything that she needs to in 45 minutes. So I'm going to offer some tips for you because I've worked in a few offices where we had 40 minute appointments. I worked in an office where in the evenings only we had half an hour appointments because we wanted to get more patients in. That was awful just saying. Um, but now I'm lucky enough to work in an office that has 60 minute appointments. But even then, I still get behind. So after 14 years, if I can get behind, it's so easy for a new dental hygienist or dental assistant or really anybody to get behind too. So I'm going to share with you guys some tips. So it doesn't matter if you have half an hour appointments, if you have um, 40 minutes, 45 or an hour, the same rules apply. Okay, so hopefully in your office you have enough trays to at least set up for the morning or the afternoon. So let's just say for easy numbers, you have um, four patients in the morning and then you have a lunch break for an hour and then you have four patients in the afternoon. Set up all of your four trays ahead of time. I'm not saying leave them out on the counter there. You should um, set them up and stack them on top of each other and hopefully you have space in your room to like put them off to the side, put them in a cabinet, put them somewhere. And on each tray, this is what you should have. You should have your instruments. So some offices have instruments in a cassette, some have pouches, you know, whatever, but have your instruments on that tray. You will need a profi angle. So your polisher, put that polisher on there. If you have enough polishers in the office to have four um, at a time, um, you will need some floss. So put a piece of um, a piece of floss on there. I use about half an arm's length, maybe a little bit shorter. Um, put that on there. Um, you will need at least two pieces or more of um, gauze on your tray. I usually have about three pieces, and sometimes I need more um, if the patient's bleeding a lot or or has a lot of plaque or tartar. Or sometimes I don't even use all three pieces, but three pieces I find is pretty average. Um, what else do you guys need? I'm trying to think. I just worked yesterday, or I'm sorry, I just worked tonight and I can't think. Um, oh yes, you, you need your polish that you are going to use. So depending on the office, you might have the polish in those little cups or the office that I'm in now, we have polish like in a tin where I just take out um, like a uh, with a spatula, I just kind of take out how much I usually need and I just put it on that tray. If you have like a polisher holder that um, some offices have it where you're able to put it on your finger, then put it in that and then leave that on your tray. Um, and you need a bib. Did I say a bib? I don't remember now. So you need that too. So set all of that up. So yes, it might not seem like a lot, but taking that two minutes means you have an extra two minutes after your next patient. So you won't be as behind. You will probably still be behind, but you would be even more behind if you had to take out the tray, take out the instruments, take the polisher, um, take your polishing paste out from here, um, you know, 
looking for things that you need, whereas if you just had that all on your tray, you're fine. Um, another thing, if you need fluoride, put that on your tray too, because some patients need it and some patients don't. So it just kind of helps to have everything there. Um, in the office where I am now, which I'm sure all offices are now like this, we need to write down every pouch. So at the end of the patient, we have to write down the load number and the date on every single pouch. So all of the instruments that we use for that patient. So say we used a handpiece, a piezo um, handle, and a piezo tip, then I would keep those three pouches that I had to open them up. And I put them sort of in my cupboard here. So then that way at the end, when I'm taking my notes in the computer, then I just have to take out those pouches, um, write down the load number and the date, and then throw them out. So that depends on your office too. But um, that helps me stay behind huge. Another thing is I am always half an hour early. Unfortunately, some offices will only pay you to be 15 minutes early. Um, if you're lucky enough to be paid to be half an hour early, awesome. Even if you're not though, I do suggest showing up a half an hour early because it saves you time and saves you stress. At least it does for me. So I show up half an hour, um, half an hour early. Um, earlier, sorry, I look through all of my patients that day. So the office where I'm in now, I work Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I actually look at my, um, my Thursday, I will look at that at the end of the day on Tuesday. So I kind of have looked through the charts already. I have always um, written little notes to, to um, tell me what I'm doing for that day and what's happening for the next appointment. Because some offices where you work, you are in charge of trying to figure out what you're doing that day. So it does help to look at the chart ahead of time, whereas some offices just have it in there for you. You know, how many units of scale to book, how many units of polish, if they need x-rays, all of that. So that helps, especially for a newbie. But if you guys don't have that, or maybe you don't have enough time to look at your charts the day before because you're not there the day before, then do show up a half an hour early, look through all of the charts of that day and look at what their next appointment is. Now this can be tricky for a new um, dental hygienist to determine if, if their next one's a three month cleaning or a three month recall. Or is it a nine month um, recall? Even if they come in every three months, it might be their nine month recall next time. Or it could be their six month. So that's harder to determine, but I do have um, a video on that too. It's probably called How to Book Appointments or how to book appointment sequencing, something like that. So search for that. Even um, feel free to stop the video now and then search for that one and then come back to this one because you need to know how to book the next appointment because you're the only one who would know that. Um, the receptionist would be able to help you too though, but the assistant would have no idea. So as a newbie, I found that was always the hardest for me when I first started was trying to figure out what their next appointment is. But you should also know what their appointment is that day. So if it doesn't say on the computer, it helps to be able to look through the chart to see which should be in their treatment plan anyway. So that's a little bit easier, but it should be in the treatment plan what you're supposed to do for that day because at the end of your appointment, you need to put in the treatment plan what um, they're doing next time because you might not be that hygienist so you need to let the other hygienist know what they're doing next time so that at least should be in the treatment plan but looking through your charts half an hour early um, making sure that everything's right in your schedule um, and setting up your trays makes such a big difference I also look at to see which patients need a probe because um, we do probes every year um, depending on the patient you know if they're if they've been healthy, if they're 21 and, and they've had two millimeter pockets for three years, then I'll do a probe every two years. If they're, you know, oral hygiene is staying the same, but um, not, to, not to confuse you guys, um, do a probe every year. So I do write down also just to remind myself which people, um, which patients need probes and x-rays. So I look at all of that. It might seem like a lot to look at and it will take you time initially. It might even take you 35 minutes to look through that, but then it, it becomes so easy. It becomes second nature. So I do show up a half an hour early still, even after 14 years, but it probably takes me 10 minutes to look through the charts because I've already looked at it the day before. Even if I haven't, it's just easy for me to kind of look through it and figure it out, but it does take time. Also, always look at the last few entries of the chart. Why? Because this tells you what the patient's like. 
because um, hopefully the, hy the um, hygienist has left notes. Even it tells you how much plaque they may have. So you can kind of prepare yourself. If the patient has heavy plaque, heavy tartar, heavy stain, you know you're going to need the piezo. So maybe take out a piezo, um, a piezo um, handle and a tip or a cavitron, whatever your office has, and set that on the tray too. So it does help to look ahead of time. Um, but last but not least, if you're behind, it happens, don't worry about it, it does get better. But I know it's stressful, believe me, I totally understand. But as a newbie, they can't expect you to be on time anyway, because you had two hours, three hours to do a cleaning in your last um, you know, program, right? And now you're down to 40 minutes, 45, or an hour. When I first started, my, my um, office was so nice because I was an assistant there first. They gave me an hour to do cleanings, even though that office had 40 minute cleanings. And that really helped me. I was still maybe five minutes behind, but imagine if I had 40 minutes, I would have been about 25 minutes behind. So they helped me so much. Um, and I'll probably actually do another um, video on this, but it's okay if you're not perfect. If you leave some calculus behind, don't stress. Everybody should know you are new and you're learning. This is how you learn. At the very least though, make sure to get the um, supra calculus because that is what you see and that is what the patients see. But if you're not perfect, you guys, honestly, I'm not perfect either. I'm sure I leave calculus behind. I'm probably the only hygienist who will admit that, but I'm not perfect either. Even if I think I got everything perfectly, you probably didn't, you know? It's the same thing as if you were to clean your windows, I don't know. It might, it might look like everything's perfect. You have cleaned the window like 10 times, but there's probably still something there, right? Nobody's perfect, even if they claim to be. And those hygienists, new, old, it doesn't matter, who say they never leave behind calculus and you shouldn't either, they're a load of, they, no, no. They're on a power trip and they think they're perfect, but they're not. So please don't worry. Um, but I should do another video on that because I have lots to say about that. Um, but yeah, you guys, so for a newbie, a dental hygienist, if you have questions, let me know. Please comment below because I love questions. It gives me something else to talk about and you're probably not the only one with that question. So please let me know. Okay. So thank you guys for tuning in and let me know too how often you want to see these. I work two or three times a week, so I could technically do a video twice a week if you wanted, or if you feel that once a week's enough, perfect. Um, make sure to hit subscribe. So then that way, every time I do upload a new video, which is at least once or twice a week, you can see it right away or just kind of save it and then watch it some other time because I love to do these. So Thank you for watching and good luck. Have a good day at work and I'll see you guys next time.